Mr. Speaker, in reference to this conference committee report, I just want to talk about the single biggest piece of new revenue included in the new taxes, accounting for $495 million of $752 million. That's greater than 57% of the new revenue. And that comes from tobacco and tobacco-related taxes. In the last few weeks, I've received numerous, and I'm sure many of you have, uh, communications from the American Cancer Society saying things like 72% of voters favor increasing the tobacco tax, 72% of Republicans, 75% of Democrats, and even Tea Party supporters, 66%, support that. Another one, they said 72% of voters in Republican-held state House seats, 71% of voters in Democratic-held state House seats, 73% of voters in Republican-held state Senate seats, 70% of voters in Democratic-held state House seats, 70% of voters who would, would be more likely to vote for a state legislative candidate who supported an increase in the state tobacco tax. Those are big numbers, Mr. Speaker. I get it. The one fact they failed to share with any member here is that about the same number of Pennsylvanians do not use tobacco products. Is Representative, any... just for a second, please suspend. Members, members, please take your seats. I'd ask all members to please take your seats. I know all legislation is important. But this is a very important piece of legislation and the gentleman has the right to be heard. I'd ask everybody to please take their seats. For vote purposes too, members should be in their seats. Representative Diamond, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, I get it. If we were to propose a tax on people with blue eyes, I guarantee you the people with brown eyes would agree. It's an easy vote for most people in this chamber. Uh, no member will probably get too much backlash from this vote, but I consider it a cheap shot. Mr. Speaker, how many times in this body have we talked about legislation aimed at ending anything that even resembles bullying? Well, Mr. Speaker, right here, what's before us is bullying writ large under color of law. I thought we lived in a commonwealth where we're all in this thing together. I don't believe we should tax 20% of the population because 80% of the population believes we should. I don't believe that's sound policy. I don't believe that's moral. I don't believe that's fair. But let's talk about who this tax, these taxes will impact. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 14% of people who make $50,000 or more use tobacco. But 37% of people who make $15,000 or less a year are smokers, 37%. Now, Mr. Speaker, I know there are many members of this General Assembly who are pounding the pavement, pounding the doors, pounding our emails, saying we need a minimum wage increase. We can have that argument sometime. But I wonder how many of those same members will now impose a $365 a year tax on 37% of the people who earn less than $15,000. Just doesn't seem fair to me. And by the way, while we're taxing those poor people, who's getting off scot-free here? The big fat cats smoking their cigars. There's no tax on them in this package. Members, please take your seats. You. Members, please take your seats. A number of individuals have asked to speak on this bill. They are entitled to be heard. I would ask all members to please take your seats.
Representative Diamond, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my third point is I want to talk about this revenue projection of $495 million from these tobacco and tobacco-related taxes. It should be known that between the years of 2009 and 2013, there were 32 increases in tobacco excise taxes in various jurisdictions across the country. 91% of them fell short of revenue expectations. That's 29 of 32. Only three actually met those expectations, and in fact, four, four of those jurisdictions actually lost revenue than from what they collected under the old lower tax. I think we have to also look to our own city of the first class, Philadelphia, in their revenue expectations when they increased the, seven, the, the cigarette tax there. It was expected in the first year to generate $84 million and $77 million after that, just in the last couple days. Their report came out, $58 million, far short of expectations. My fourth point, Mr. Speaker, is the unintended consequences of increasing the excise taxes on tobacco and tobacco-related products. We are going to encourage tax evasion. We've already seen that in Philadelphia where people are going across to Montgomery or Bucks or Chester or Delaware County to buy their cigarettes. We've also seen, you can only call them outlaws, who are out there rolling their own in some warehouse somewhere with a big machine, selling them by the bag for $14 a carton. We're only going to see more of that. For example, in West Virginia, if we increase, if we pass this, in West Virginia, cigarettes will be $3 a pack cheaper. In Ohio, they will be $1.50 cheaper. In Maryland, they will be $1.25 cheaper. And in Delaware, which is within the reach of 30% of Pennsylvania's population, 37%, excuse me, they will be $2.25 a pack cheaper than the state price, but probably $4.25 a pack cheaper than Philadelphia's price. We're also going to increase smuggling from southern states. I spent a lot of time in New York State when I was a truck driver. I want to tell you, some of the cigarettes you buy there have Virginia tax stamps. How do they get there? They get there on Route 81. Interstate 81 is a smuggler's alley. Now, Pennsylvania will be a stop on smuggler's alley. And what kind of folks are in the cigarette smuggling business, and what else do they do with their money? Are they also involved in other illegal activities? Are they involved in human trafficking? Are they funding Hezbollah or ISIS? We don't know. And let's talk about the impact this will have on our retailers, Mr. Speaker. There are 13,420 retailers in Pennsylvania that sell cigarettes. Cigarettes account for 33% of convenience store sales. If people are buying cigarettes illegally and not at the convenience store, what do you think that does to those businesses? Mr. Speaker, I believe that these cigarette taxes are nothing more than bullying writ large. I believe we are impacting the poor far too heavily. I believe the re revenue projections will fall far short of the $495 million. And I believe the unintended consequences of a black market will be detrimental to Pennsylvania. For these reasons and others, I'll be voting no on this conference committee report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.